Hello, this is HL7StarterKit.com. Welcome. Um, if you've read my book or if you've seen any of my other videos, then you know that I am a fan of HL7 readers and viewers, and in particular, Interface Explorer by Laconic-Designs.com. Um, I'll put a link below to my blog post on how to get Interface Explorer um, and use it up until the 45-day trial and then use it beyond the 45-day trial. Um, so read that post. In the meantime, um, I did make a video on the features available after the 45-day trial and how to keep it, but I didn't actually show the features. So this is like a part two to that other video, which I will put a link to on the bottom also. But I just wanted to show you the features you can use after the 45-day trial expires. And the first one I have here is you can open HL7 files with Interface Explorer directly. By default, uh, Interface Explorer will open up any .hl7 file, so let's go ahead and do that and show you how to do that. Here's a sample.hl7 file. I'm going to double click it, and here's the registration that expired pop up. And um, I just click OK, and Interface Explorer nicely opens up um, my sample.hl7 file, which happens to have 18, you can see right here, 18 messages. So, there I go. I can open up a .hl7 file. What else can I do? Um, you can open any file in the file recent documents list. So anything in here, in my recent um, documents list, I can open. So, let's open this one. Oh, it doesn't exist, I'm sorry. Uh, but, actually, so let's just open up the one I already have open. So the one in there, apologize for that, I don't have any more. <laughs> so, but you can see that you can open it up and if it doesn't exist, you get that nice message that I just got and it'll tell you it doesn't exist so I can't open it. Okay, what else can it do? You can paste HL7 messages directly into the application to analyze the message. Okay, you can paste messages directly inside. So let's take this one HL7 message here. I'm going to copy it. Control C, I'm on Windows. By the way, unfortunately, Interface Explorer is only available on Windows. They don't have a Mac version. Um, that's um, unfortunate because I have a MacBook myself and um, I have to always go to my Windows machine to do this analysis. Or if you have a VM aware on your Mac, you can always um, use it on your Mac too uh, if you have Windows installed. So, okay, so where are we? It just have a message directly. So, you're going to want a new window. So. This is disabled. If you say File New, oh, it is. It's open. I'm sorry. I thought it was disabled. The button. The button is disabled. Okay. So let's do, let's do, let's do that again. If you want, if you're already inside Interface Explorer, you can do, you can create a new window by doing File New. If I click the button, <laughs> Interface Explorer closes. Again, I think um, that's, that's an issue. Um, uh, with the application. So let's do File New. I'm going to click inside of here and I'm going to Control V and paste. And there we go. I can paste HL7 messages directly into here. Um, so that's another feature. You can compare files and get a, a different report. That's pretty cool. Let's try that. So let's do, um, actually, let's go fi open up our sample.hl7 file from the recent document list. Okay, it says I can compare files and get a different report. Let's say I want to compare the first file to the last file, the first message to the last message. They're not files, they're messages. Um, so I'm going to do, I'm going to right click, I'm going to say, I'm going to go to compare and I'm going to set this one as record number one. And then I'm going to go to the last one, same thing, right click, compare, set this record as number two, and here we go. Look at this, how awesome this is. This is a diff inside of Interface Explorer. And there we go. And what are the differences? Um, you can see the record number one, record number two. Differences are in red. So if I scroll down my list, the only difference between these two HS7 messages are MSH4. This one has some facility value. This one has BCCD facility value. So that's cool. You can also copy to the clipboard um, and all that cool stuff. So you can do that with two files, it looks like. Um, so again, 
you can do that. Now you can determine unique values across multiple message fields. I've made a video on that. I'll put a link down to the video as well, and I'll put the, a link to the video in the notes. But um, let's say you want to know all of the, I don't know, all of the PID threes. Go to PID three because everyone knows that's MRN. How many, how many PID threes are in here? We know there are eighteen, but what are the PID threes? Right-click, determine unique field values, and here we go. There we are. Out of these 18 messages, there are just one PID3. So these 18 messages are all a result of, um, of one patient. So it tells a story about that one patient. Um, like all HL7 messages do. If you know how to analyze them, you can put a story together. So that's how you do that. Let's say you want to do a message 4 because I know that's different. So I did that with the other video. Determine unique values. Here you get a list of all MSH4s. You know there are five unique values, so MSH4 is sending facility, and I have five unique sending facilities in this entire list of HL7 messages. And that becomes very useful when you're analyzing uh, information. Uh, so that's how you do that. And uh, that's it. And I have here the last piece. You can see all values in a message. Yes, of course. As I click through each message, so that's message 1, message 2, let's go to message 18. You can see that the top changes here. Here it changes. So let's let's go to message 18 and let's look at EVN 4. There you go. And um, you just want to scroll to the right here. As you highlight the HL7 message on the left-hand side, the right-hand side populates with the entire message. So if you scroll down, you can see all of the segments. But if I go directly to a segment, Interface Explorer brings it up to the top of the list. So that's pretty cool. I go to MSH, you can see it changes, EVN changes, PID changes, and if I had any more, DG1, uh, you, know, you know, Guarantor segments, all that stuff, insurance segments, they would also change down here. So that's it. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, like my video. Check out my HL7 Starter Kit.com book if you if you're in the HL7 space. Um, it's free with Kindle Unlimited on Amazon. Check out my Facebook page. I'll put all the links to the other videos at the bottom of this video. And that's it. Have a nice day. Take care.